look at um, Quakers and alternative organizations and trying to see what can be learnt about those in relation to kind of ideas of leadership and equality and, and morning, what, what can um, we kind of take take forward from that. So thanks very much speak, for um, the chance to speak on this today. Um, so why why this interest? Um, and I think this is kind of important starting point um, for the next kind of 20, 20 minutes here. I mean, my research is centered around, I suppose, personal concerns in, in relation to environmental sustainability. This is going back to when I kind of moved out of working in the private sector back at the end of the kind of early 2000s to start doing a PhD on, you know, questions about well, what, what are organisations actually doing about sustainability given uh, aspects such as, as I've mentioned in a moment, around kind of climate emergency uh, so and different thing, questions that are being raised about um, the, the, the planet in which we are inhabiting. So this is really where my interest comes from, and it's this connection into... Um, uh, from sustainability, that the, the, the interest in alternative organisation and, and thinking about what that means comes comes from. So, just to say a bit more clearly about, I suppose, sustainability and where we are. I guess many of us have seen and um, read quite a lot about these topics, but I think the kind of key points I just want to make quickly here before I kind of move into the main part of this presentation is that. Um, you know, we've got this long history of human evolution here that we need to think about. Um, and we're talking about the current times of so this, the Anthropocene, this idea that humans are the most kind of significant geological force on the planet, um, as well as this sort of various scientific analysis telling us about the, the, the issues that we're facing around all kinds of environmental questions, biodiversity, climate change, nitrogen cycle, and there's a whole range of, of work there. So, so I think the key kind of message here, um, coupled with the fact that we've got you know, a range of kind of protest movements that are developing and developed, although I suppose more constrained at the moment due to kind of pandemic and ability to convene some of those, those protests around the school strike, particularly around climate action, and also social movements, in particular kind of Extinction Rebellion, that's been looking at how urgent action can be taken on uh, the climate emergency. So that I think the key sort of message here is that at this moment that we're in here, if we call it a moment, there's something kind of new under the sun, uh, to use some words from kind of John McNeil, an environmental historian. We're in a moment here that um, offers some particular questions to us about how we're kind of getting on together and, and doing things together. Um, and so I spent a fair time during my, well, going back to my connections with kind of energy and power industry before I started my PhD, but going back to when I started my PhD, um, which is some years ago now, I suppose about, about eight or nine years ago, but, um, but talking to senior managers in the energy and power market and hearing from them about their kind of views of the treadmill of growth uh, of economic growth in which they felt themselves to be on often and how they were felt constrained and kind of powerless in some ways to to make changes um, in order to address the challenges which they they articulated around environmental sustainability and the different issues that that includes okay my screen has moved on so i better follow it um so what i want to make a connection between this so we've got this sort of moment of um of really needing to respond to environmental issues. But when looking at my work around organizations and forms of organizing, I think a key connection that we can think about making um, is around social equality and, e and e ecological sustainability. And various, I suppose, various writings talk about a whole range of dimensions here, whether they be about intergenerational, gender, racial, class, financial. So whilst I think these are complex relationships in many ways, and I'm not going to reduce them to kind of linear, linear effects, but these are related in different ways and different authors have talked about these. And so I think what we need to kind of take away here is saying, well, different forms of equality we can assume are relating to um, better ways of going on together in terms of, I suppose, futures of flourishing or sustainability, however we might want to, to talk about them. And we can refer to 
authors, I mean, many as I mentioned here, but also sort of the work of like Murray Bookchin, uh, social ecology work that talks about the sort of domination of nature being something that's reflective of, of human relations that are sort of dominating each other. So making these connections, and we can also think about the work of um, which is associated with Quaker communities, Wilson, uh, Wilkinson and Pickett's book, The Spirit Level, uh, around more equal societies and better outcomes. So. So whilst I think these are complex relationships between equality and environmental sustainability, um, I think we can we can understand that there are a range of a range of connections here. So this is where this leads into an interest in alternative organisations um, and this idea that the me the means by which we organise in terms of how we come together and get things done can be reflective of these ends towards. Um, taking responsibility for individual and collective flourishing positive futures as it as it were so this is a very much departure from uh, what we might describe in a management or business school or often maybe gets taken for granted as the form of organizing that is what we could say is the dominant or traditional form which is a sort of hierarchical capitalist managerialist uh, type of organization so alternative organizations are distinctive from from that form um, particularly through its respect for kind of personal autonomy but within a framework of kind of collective um, collective um, working and collective uh, processes of coming together so so alternatives is an area particularly within the critical management studies uh, literature that talks about these ideas and tries to understand what we can how we can develop these what they mean and what opportunities they I suppose they offer for us um, and particularly seems to be, I suppose, prefigurative, this idea that these notions of organisation are, uh, they're not sort of full blown utopias that we, um, uh, we can move to, I think, um, they're more, I suppose, glimpses of possibilities, they are enacted, they are, they exist, these are forms of organising that, that go on, um, but how they can, I suppose, offer us insights into different ways of doing things on, on a, sort of a wider, a wider scale. Okay. Um, so Quaker organization, I think we can uh, we can very much connect with alternative organizing organizing ideas and has been connected by in various ways, I suppose. But um, I, mean, I guess there's quite an awareness of Quakers within this this grouping. I um, just added a few kind of points there, just in case people are coming to this for the different degrees of awareness of the kind of Quake community. Um, but I think we can see these connections to personal autonomy and this kind of framework of cooperation uh, in relation to Quaker organising. So personal autonomy is in sort of slide around um, that there's no kind of formal hierarchical roles or that there is um, a need to kind of interpret um, interpret, I suppose, testimonies in at the kind of individual level, perceive the kind of way forward. This, these kind of ideas, uh, discern, discern the meaning. Uh, this notion of kind of God in everybody, so this respect for um, individual autonomy. But within frameworks of cooperation in terms of local meeting organisation, I'm thinking specifically here. I'm not talking about kind of Quaker business organisations in this in this presentation. Um, but how there are different frameworks, particularly around the business method, rotation of roles, the different ways that, that roles are kind of assigned and, and nominations happen. So the work I've done with Quaker groups and is through my own kind of personal involvement with a couple of meetings, uh, through uh, interviews I've conducted in, in, with Quakers in the north of England and some workshops that I've done, half day workshops with different Quaker groups across the UK um, around ideas of leadership and what these might mean and different, different questions associated, associated with that. So that's what I'm going to draw on to just offer some comments in the, the remaining time. That I've got so here. Say, so in terms of Quaker leadership, um, leadership is often a term that um, is resisted um, by, by, by many, I suppose, within the Quaker community, as it's often associated with this very kind of heroic leadership notion, this kind of dominant idea about leadership, which we see in our society, I think, in, in general, really. these sort of heroic superhero leaders or villains, as they might be, that kind of um, have these abilities beyond the rest of us to kind of do things and, and create things. So those are very often 